Hello, good day viewers. Good day to all our members across Nigeria and around the world. You are welcome to another episode to CITN Taxation and You. Um, today, we have a very important guest in our studio. We'll be discussing in detail how we can use taxation to achieve something very important in the life of our country. Within the past few months, the country has gone deeper into various of economic challenges, and we ask, is there a thing taxation can do? So to join us in discussing and analyzing everything we have for today is uh, Mr. Ganyu Oluwashola, SCTI, I'm calling the fellow of the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria, and is the managing partner of KJB Professional Services. Uh, Mr. Ganyu Oluwashola, SCTI, welcome to our studio, welcome to our program. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be around again. Thank you so much. So Mr. Ganyu will be leading us as we discuss um, using taxation to drive, uh, um, you know, uh, you know, industrialization in Nigeria, using taxation, you know, in driving industrialization in Nigeria. So, and um, Mr. Gani has been an industrialization enthusiast. Um, he has applied, on, uh, you know, he appeared on various TV stations, various programs where he discusses um, industrialization, among other things. So, um, to start with, um, uh, Mr. Gani, thank you once again. Um, can you just give us? Um, what are your thoughts generally on the state of industrialization in Nigeria? Uh, yeah, in the present day Nigeria. I said, I don't forget to. <laughs> okay, in the present, you know, when you are even talking about the present day Nigeria, you talk about for you to see how is the future going to be, how has it been before? Okay. Where, why are we where we had today? How do we marry the past to the present and get a very good future? and which will give us a very good thing to, to look at it. And when you look at, uh, Nigeria is a place where we have a lot of industry. Oh, before you look at, can you know where the couple pigeons, you see Dunlop was here, Michelin tires were here. And you remember many years ago, this butter, they do this butter shoe. And you see everywhere, even if you have not gotten a shoe, if you have not worn butter, you've not wear a shoe there. And you see, those are the things we are, and companies see it as a very good place to be able to establish the organization. And do not forget that the more organization we have here, the, the better for the, for, for, the, for our economy. Because once we have more organization, we have more employment opportunity. Because as the industries are coming into Nigeria, they are not going to bring their citizens there. They are going to employ Nigerian citizens. So as they are giving Nigeria employment, indirectly we are increasing their purchasing powers. As they are, we are increasing their purchasing powers, invariably also we are increasing our GDP. Because it's, as their purchasing power is increasing, they are, the, our GDP is increasing. And once our GDP is increasing, the government is going home with, is getting more cash because as people are getting more employed, they will pay more taxes as personal income taxes. And so the more taxes they pay, the states have so much money to deal with their various transactions. And also, it also increased our forest because we, we, there's what we call capital importation. As they're coming into the country, they're not going to come in from another jurisdiction with our local or functional currency. They're going to bring in their own currency and which is going to pass through the CBN. And so once it's passing through the CBN, it naturally boosts our foreign exchange. And so once we have our foreign exchange, once our foreign exchange is increasing, it puts Nigeria at a very good pedestrian in the global space. Because don't do not forget, the more forests we have, the more strength in our, our currency will be strengthened, and the more we'll be able to also uh, effectively transact business at the global space. Because when we are dealing with other jurisdiction or other country, we are not going to use our functional currency. We are not going to use our functional currency, our local naira. We are going to use foreign currency. And so those people that are bringing in foreign currency, it comes to our reserve at the CBN. And so once they come into Nigeria, we give them our local currency equivalent of what they brought in. And so that currency, we stock it and we store it in our home bank. So in case we want to deal with other country, we we'll use that currency to deal with them because we are not going to use our local Naira. So invariably, it's a good thing for us. And also as they're coming, there's what we call CSR. 
corporate social responsibility, which they are going to do to show that, oh, we are in Nigeria, we are doing X, Y, Z for the government of the country. So in, indirectly, the more industrialized we are, the, more, the better for us. So you could see then also a windscreen, a windshield is being produced in Ibadan. Right, so a lot of things come. Even what they use in doing the uh, the Michelin tire there is being produced in rivers. Those so we don't we barely import. So and do you know that that's one of the things that is going to help us. And since we have it there, our economy that is why you see there at the early eighties a naira is stronger than a dollars because our, our economy is thriving. That, that's why we also see the about product, those people oh, uh, about yes, uh, and you see everything is going very well. So they depend on that. So since we now lose track on what to do, so it naturally affects our industry and every organizations are into business to make profit. Take it or leave it. They are into business to make profit. So if the environment is not actually giving them the desired profit they are around to make, then they will just is out. Wow, thank you for um, that background and um, into where we've been as a country, what industrialization can do for us, what it did for us, what can it do in the future. Um, thank you for painting that picture. So let's go further. Um, we, you've given us a snippet into a glorious past, right? Where well, you mentioned the butter, we later became farmers in all of the Leventis, all of the, you know, um, so many of them, you mentioned them, you know, the Dunlop, you know, Michelin and all of that. Um, so uh, can you, in your, from what you've seen so far, um, you are a, a chartered accountant and a chartered tax practitioner yourself. And I mean, work with various businesses from the SMEs to the large corporates and to, multi, to the multinationals. And I, I'm also aware you have a rich banking experience as well. Um, because we have one in that the same bank <laughs> at some point. So, what has been the curse, or what are the causes for this dwindling, for this dive in the state or in the level of industrialization in Nigeria? What's made that U turn, a bad U turn for us from the ascendancy we were facing before everything seemed to look like we are going downhill? when it comes to the industries we have in Nigeria, the variation, even if you ones are, you know, shutting down. So what are the issues? What are the matters that have led to this? You want to share with our audience? Okay, a, a good one. You see, tax is major component of the fiscal policy, right? The government can either use the monetary policy or the fiscal policy to control its spending, and also is reserves in order to be able to build the influence the economy. And when you look at it in real terms, we know that we have security challenges, right? And an average business, we just say that, oh, and the, the way they paint the picture to people outside the country is that once you step into Nigeria, is either you are kidnapped or you are bombed or something just happened. Right, because the, the, that, that's a picture, right? And when you now look also in the sense of taxation, taxation, when you look at it practically in Nigeria, officially we have over 60 taxes. And unofficially we have over 200 taxes. <laughs> wow, this is serious, these numbers. Oh, wow, oh, so is that much? Yeah, yeah, unofficial. Okay, take for instance, <laughs> you know, to, to a typical taxpayer, a layman, in as much you call yourself a government official or something, and you need to get money from me, for me to be able to put my market somewhere or do something to a typical person is a tax. Okay, 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 okay. So any form of levy and is considered? It's considered it because you are collecting something from me, for me to be able, and indirectly, I expect you to do, to give me your, to give a fiscal response. Right to be able to, for me to be able to enjoy. Okay, there was a time there was a a statistics was done and says that an Agbero in Lagos, Agbero in Lagos, they collect over hundred billion as revenue. No, for real? Yes, hundred billion. So the question is that what is the fiscal response that the Agbero give? Which road did they build? Right? <laughs> Which road did they construct? So the question is that a lot of money gets to. In individual without getting to the government, 
Okay. Do you get it? Okay. And so statistics now also have it that even over out of these over 200 taxes we have, 98% of government revenue comes from only six to seven tax aid. Okay. okay. So which means that what happened to around 93 taxes? It infiltrated into different people's pocket, which cannot be coordinated. Uh, there was a time in reverse for a manufacturing company, almost 197 taxes were paid. So the question is just like you tax a manufacturing company to debt before they. So the question is that how do they survive in that kind of atmosphere? Right? The question is that how do they survive in that kind of atmosphere? We, if we have even a typical organization does not know the number of taxes to be complied with. Right. So at that point in time, if those taxes are too much, it creates additional burden on them. And once it creates additional burden on them, they'll still strive to survive because they are into business to make profit. One or two things they need to do is to reduce their staff aid. So as they are reducing their staff aid, maybe from one to, from five thousand to three thousand, from three thousand to one thousand, from one thousand to two hundred. So when it gets to reducing to hundred, the question is that what will we do with hundred? So rather for us to still struggle to survive because they need to cut down their overhead to still maintain their profit level. So in that point that they are streaming down their overhead and it's still having their, an impact on their revenue, then they just have to, to ease out. So the question is that, how do we marry all these two together? And do not forget, the government also owe them social contract because the question is that we are paying our taxes, right? The government should respond with fiscal responsibility, make the road okay, for the electricity. So you could discover that the organization, that's for the taxes it pay also, it fixes its road by itself, okay. it provides the light for itself, for ourselves, right? And in the long run, in the long run, there was no, there is no corresponding, uh, corresponding fiscal policy that the government is doing. So it's doing both what the government should do. This is what we call <laughs> implicit taxes. Okay, 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 okay. You see, implicit taxes saying that after doing my taxes, I'm also doing what the government should do for me. Okay, okay, okay. So okay. it creates additional burden on me and which also affects my survivor level. Wow, wow, wow. I, I get you. But what you seem to have um, come hard, uh, you know, this CITN, right? <laughs> and we are tax people, tax professionals. You seem to have come hard from the multiplicity of tax side of it, and also from the lack of government to fulfill his um, to fulfill his own side of the social contract. Very right? so, but um, we are going to go further, much further into that. But for purpose of our listeners and other government officials who are tuned in and who are listening to the discussion, now what will you say to be the other reasons beyond the multiplicity of taxes, beyond the, the failure of government to fulfill your social contracts? What will you be as someone who has been in this organization, uh, you know, development space? Um, what other things will you say have accounted for the dwindling nature of the number of industries in Nigeria or matters that are affecting that is making the big names that we know now begin to take their decision and all of that? What are some of the reasons? And um, and maybe how can we now deal with those things, those reasons before we now go to the taxation side, which is our own domain, properly. Okay. Yeah, taxation side, you know, like what I tell people that two wrongs can never make it right, right? So we must do our own parts and then hold the government accountable, right? So aside, before we go into the taxation side, which we are going to talk in detail about it, is so one of the things that affects them is we talk about insecurity, okay? right? Okay. Insecurity, most of them, their staffs are being kidnapped and they need to pay through their truth to be able to rescue that stuff. And in the long run, they just discovered that even their profit, they are turning it into the ends of some miscreant, okay. right? So it, it, they, they look at their survivor strength in that kind of environment. And they also, they look at the instability of our currency. Okay. Okay, okay as we speak, dollar to oh, a Naira is over uh, around 1,168 
naira to a dollar in the uh, in the market, market, market. Yeah. right? So the question is that if they bring in, let's say they bring in one billion dollars, when they are repatriating it, because the devaluation of our naira, they might not repatriate even up to one billion. Okay. Let alone not talking about the profit on it. Okay. Since they are not trading in dollars here. So since they are not trading in dollars, they bring it into a current into the country and it's been converted into a local currency. So after the transaction with the profit they made and they convert it back to dollar, mm. it's either they match it up with the same one billion they brought in or at a lower rate. So it's, it prevents them from also be able to uh, project and also get the value for the money they're bringing into the system because of the instability of our currency and we should be properly looked into because you know these people, they are not, they are expatriate, they are importing their money into Nigeria. And if they are bringing it, they, they need some level of comfort. They need some level of clarity and some level of certainty that mm -hmm. once they're repatriating their money, they'll be able to repatriate it with the markup okay. to be able to, you know, if not because of this government now is not easing things, there was a time that they cannot even repatriate their money. So the question is that they're bringing the money into Nigeria and it's locked. Yeah. So the current government is now trying to talk to them and say, don't worry, to be able to repatriate your money, it won't be like a, a nightmare again. A lot of thing, policies have been put in place, strategies have been put in, even including the forest windows to ensure that, oh, we'll be able to manage things and ensure that they do not have, they they they, they be able to get value for the money they bring into Nigeria. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. As we mentioned, uh, the, the threat of insecurity, then the policy instability on part of government uh, making businesses to go. Um, so now let's look at um, the main reason why we are here. Um, though you've touched around the multiplicity of taxes already. Now, given our situation now as a country, as Nigeria, a, a lot of very good news are now out there. Um, of the uh, of before we came online, we're talking about the GSK, yeah. decision to shut down production totally and to exit Nigeria. Just this morning, we read in the paper, the Procter and Gamble PNG, saying they are going to shut down manufacturing and go into importation. For example, um, some months ago, Guinness did a review tell, you know, um, saying um, a review, you know, that um, no, they are not living in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. That it was um, so they were wrongly deep, they were misunderstood. But you and I, we know their plants here. We are not far from their plants here in Ogba. Go to Ogba from Obakra down to Ogba and all of that. The the degree, the capacity they used to utilize as Guinness is no longer there. The last time I saw, they sold a portion of their plants to just try it. So this is the practical reality. Whether they're living there or not, or they're not living whatsoever, and a whole couple of them here and there. You know, so given all of this, now how can we begin a rescue mission of using taxation to a kind of um, reindustrialize or deepen? the state of the industrialization that we have in Nigeria. Because, you know, like you said, the leader too, they create jobs. They increase the earning power of the workers. And all of those, you boost the GDP, because when you earn, you spend, you spend an economy thrives and the equilibrium swells. So from the tattoo part of it, which is our business, our professional, what do you think government can begin to do? What are the kind of, what is the model? What is the structure? What strategy? What are the incentives? What are the ways government can use taxation as a tool to try to drive industrialization once again in Nigeria? Okay, this is a beautiful question. Uh, the answer is not far-fetched. Let, let me give kudos to the good work that the Taiwo Yedile Committee is doing, right? And when you look at it, we, we discover that it's not, we can't solve a problem by creating additional problem. Okay. Right. Okay. So I will not say that we have revenue problem and create more problem. What actually brought us here? Take for instance, the government might discover that we need more money to fund the educational sector. 
uh, government does not have money, let's tax the corporate organization. Let's come up with a tax policy to be able to fund the educational sector. So they come up with tertiary education tax. So that added to our tax portfolio, which graduated from 2% to 3%. So they said, oh, government, we don't have, the police are not well taken care of. Government is powerless. Let's tax these people again. They introduce police trust fund, right? So before we know it, our tax begin to increase. And the thing is just that they do, what they should know is that we don't, we can't keep increasing taxes. And when you look at most of this, like we speak, our tax to GDP ratio is less than 11%. South African tax to GDP ratio is over 27%, right? So the question is that mm -hmm. how many head of taxes does South Africa? I don't want to go to US. US taxes, they are not up to 10. They're not even up to seven. Seriously? Very well. And their tax to GDP ratio is astronomical. So it's not the number of taxes we have that matters, but the efficiency and effectiveness of the taxes that matters, right? So the question is that what are the taxes that, so we look at it statistically now, if 98% of the taxes that we are being collected of government revenue comes from six to seven taxes, so why not can't we stick to those seven taxes? Right. So if we stick to those seven, we do not even need to increase these taxes. All is just for us to, to ensure the effective collection. Right. OK. Take for instance, now the PNG that are living the GSK of this world, some of them have over 5,000 employees. So most of these 5,000 employees go back to the labor market. And as they go back to the labor market, three things happen. They've lost their job, government lost revenue because there will not be taxes from there. Personal income taxes automatically goes down the road. Number two, their purchasing power is off. They can't buy anything. So our GDP, gross domestic product, automatically knows die. So they have no purchasing power to buy. Right. So the third thing that happen also is that not only do they lose the job, the other thing is that it's also going to affect our economy. So the thing is just that for us to drive industrialization. Number one, we need to reduce our taxes, right? And let us have, if we are doing four taxes or five taxes, let us know that these are the taxes we are sticking to. And not only does we, we, yes, we are not crying, we are not saying that they should give them tax waivers, right? But make the environment conducive for them to be able to function effectively. Let me even uh, take it a bit. At South Africa here, if you are earning 4.5 million per annum, you are exempted from taxes. So invariably, if you are any, million rand. No, in no, Nigerian no, currency. In Nigerian currency, okay, converted. Yes. Okay. So invariably, if you are earning around three hundred thousand per month, you are exempted from taxes. Okay. okay. And yet, and yet, in personal income taxes, they collected over twenty-four trillion. And if you now put it vis a vis Nigeria, all the thirty-six states, including federal capital territory. What we've collected is not up to one trillion. Wow. So the question is now is that what we are we? What happened to our effectiveness, right? And when you, you, you might now argue between that, oh, South Africa per capita income is almost three times Nigeria. I will agree with you, but do not forget that South African population is like one third of Nigerian population. That is number one. Number two is that. If you look at the top, you know, Nigeria, when you look at our focus more, it's focusing on the bottom. People earning so little and paying more as taxes. So let's focus on the big boys that are earning much. If you look at the one third of the big boys that are earning more taxes, to be able to get taxes from there, we will be able to get more than what South Africa is collecting. Kenya here, Kenya came up with a policy that we think that the policy depends on the policy. Kenya came up with a policy that if you are coming in Kenya and you are doing business in Kenya, the electricity provider, they must not take 
the electricity for up to 24 hours. And if they are going to take it, they must inform you. Okay. And if there's a revenue loss for those period, they will refund you. So if you're a typical businessman, where will you like to go? You will go to Kenya. So because they are trying to do put structures in play to be able to attract investors. So if you look at it now, that, oh, these are things to put in place to be able to attract investors, then it makes it easier for them to be able to try, right? Uh, and you also, one of the things also, which I will also say is that government should also lead by example. Leading by example in terms of tax paying, uh, the accountant general report, I think for last year, came up and says that, oh, that they are not collected so much revenue because the presidency is not paying tax. The National Assembly is not paying tax. The customs are not paying tax. EFCC is not paying taxes. So indirectly that the taxes they deducted from the employee, they do not remit. Mm -hmm. If they make contracts, they give out contracts to other individuals and they deduct with auditors and VAT, they do not remit. So invariably, it, and if that must go to equity, it must go with a cleaner. So if you are going to punish me, you must also lead by example that these are the taxes that I deducted. I'm also remitting it. And I'm also providing the social contracts that I need to provide, making the environment. Con we have so much thing. For, you know, it's also, I tell people that it's an anathema for Nigeria to be suffering from electricity. In the north, we have, we, we, we have thermal that can naturally power the night. The heat in the north can be converted. We have the dam. So we should have enough light that will be able to help the, the, the operations of industry to be able to function effectively and efficiently. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you so much um, for that dimension. So for our listeners and viewers, what, what our guests have said, spoken about multiplicity, um, they need to be effective around certain heads. Of taxes. Right, of taxes. Not all these, um, so many, and only like seven of them are contributing to the pool of the fund. The, the, that was, even there, there was something that happened. Somebody got a news. You, you see, is that oh, some, oh, a person imported a G-Wagon bulletproof. Okay. A G-Wagon bulletproof. Which is even a G-Wagon that is not bulletproof goes for almost, uh, almost 200 million. Not talking about bulletproof that could go for almost 500 million. So, and the, the custom duty on that G wagon was saying that the value is 2 million. Is it the cost of the tire or what? Okay. So, you could now see where the inequality and the disparity is coming in. So, if we can treat everybody equally and collect taxes from the right set of people, then our tax to GDP ratio, we, as we speak, our tax to GDP ratio is less than 11%. So it will help us to increase it because it shows that we are doing what is right per time, right? And every industry in the country, because an average industry that comes into Nigeria knows that they must pay their taxes. They must improve the, the economy. You see, and you, and you truth be told, Nigeria has a lot of things for industries to be able to thrive. Organizations, they can, Nigerian soil is a very good place to thrive. But the question is that we need to make the environment more conducive in terms of security. And in terms of tax, we are not even talking about tax waivers. We are not talking about tax incentives, right? We are talking about policies that could make organizations thrive. Okay, the last, the, the last finance act, I think it will be an error that comes in there and says that investment allowance, it's pulled out from the pool. So if you bring out, and the idea behind investment allowance is that if an organization brings it because it costs so much for a plant, for you to buy a plant is cool, you can spend hundreds of billions, hundreds of millions and billions of dollars to bring in a plant. Ask Coca-Cola of this one, then go to this one. And the idea behind it is that once I bring in that plant, you are going to give me investment allowance, which is just 10% as an additional allowance that will not reduce my bottom line of my capital allowance, and which is, which is good. And the finance announces that the investment allowance is no longer obtainable. Then the question is that 
what will now be my benefit. So those are some little things that could also help an industry and also give them some courage to bring in a big asset, even bring in their intellectual property and, and establish it in Nigeria for us to be able to get the benefit. Until they come to this shore of this country, we will not enjoy the benefit because once they come, it's sacrosanct that our citizen will be employed. They'll be gainfully employed. Look at what MTN is doing. Look at a lot of people that's been employed. What is paying them and the taxes they are paying. And the taxes they are paying is helping the government. So these are things that need to be fight soon so that we could retain them. The more of this country we retain, the better for us as a country. Well, thank you so much. Someone has said, um, we are going to open our studio now to take um, questions, to take commentary from our members who are listening. Um, colleagues and um, guests across the length and breadth of this country and outside of Nigeria, we are discussing something very germane to the life of this country at this time. So we are going to appreciate comments coming in on how, how can we use taxation to drive industrialization. So this is not just um, an intellectual discussion. This is not just an academic um, sojourn. It's something that we need to look at at the time of our country and to see what we can make out of it. So for our, for our audience, if you have a um, question to ask our guests, if you have contributions to make, we can use the palm icon, the palm icon on your, on your you know, uh, on the platform, use the palm icon. So we'll call you, you introduce yourself, Go ahead and ask questions, make a contribution, and play. let's stay with the topic um, of the discussion. Let's stay with the topic of the discussion. That is very important. Um, and um, our messages, um, do we have any messages for now? No, yeah, not yet. So let's go to uh, Mr. Shehu Abdullahi. Mr. Shehu Abdullahi, may you unmute and um, go ahead. Mr. Shehu Abdullahi, thank you. Mr. Shewa Bilai, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Hello? Yes, Shewa Bilai, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, good morning to the guest, my lecturer at uh, Green Vine School. Oh, uh, wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've been following the interaction. It's so good. Um, I like the part where he mentioned the topic is about industrialization and how industrialization can boost our taxation in Nigeria. Um, he made mention of one very important thing, which is um, energy, provi provision of energy to the industry. He made mention that in the north, there are abundant solar energy okay. that if could be used effectively would increase our, uh, our power generation. It's very important thing. Because uh, in most cases, these businesses are going down. Or most industries are running away from Nigeria because of the power problem we have in the country, the instability of the power. So if government or private sector will invest more in the solar energy generation, that could do a, a little better than how we are doing now in the country. Okay. And he also okay. made. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Go also ahead. made mention of um an, uh, annual allowance mm -hmm. being granted that the last finance act that has trampled with it. I think the annual allowance and the initial allowance is the man that taught me annual allowance and initial allowance. Please for that. Annual allowance and initial allowance. I think maybe because they are so related or they were not clear to the policymakers, that was why the thought of removing the annual allowance uh, in the last finance act. Can you shed light on these two things? Maybe the policymakers, some of them are not well trained in taxation. That was why they felt that they are the same thing that one will support the other. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Shah Abdullahi. We are going to take everything in a single swoop. Let's go ahead to Dr. Peter Oriawati. Dr. Peter Riawote, may you unmute. In the meantime, um, the owner of Technopop 6, Technopop 6 go for GSO. Kindly rename, let's have your name and then so that I can take you on. Please rename your device appropriately so that I can have your name. Meanwhile, Dr. Peter Riawote, may you go ahead, please. Thank you. Uh, good morning and uh, thank you for this section. 
Uh, it's been very, very, very interesting. Thank you so much. There is a, a, trem a tremendous growth, but it's geometric now. Is number of uh, free trade zones in Nigeria. Okay. So I want our lecturer to educate us on, because there are a lot of misconceptions. You know, how can we use uh, taxation to drive industrialization in these free trade zones? In other words, what are the benefits that would accrue to investors in these free trade zones or export processing zones? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Peter Riawoche. Let's go to uh, my friend and colleague, Mr. Abdullah Derogba. Mr. Derogba, may you unmute and then um, you have the floor. Yeah, good, mor good morning. Good morning, sir. Yeah, mine is not really a question, but I just, uh, just a contribution. Okay, I so think go ahead, the, tax reform, the tax reform committee set up by the government has committed their reports, and I want to seriously believe that inputs of those that matters were contained in that report. So government need to act fast, not this issue of setting up another committee to look at it and then we are down the line, six, eight, we are still on the same story. So it needs to be looked into so that we can move forward as a nation and also to call to address some of these issues that we are talking about. Thank you very much, the presenter, and have a nice day. Thank you, Mr. Deroba. Thank you for that very important contribution. And I hope um, those in the other quarters are listening. Um, is there enough to just um, the report that is being submitted by the tax reform committee um, should be quickly implemented rather than um, creating the bureaucracy of trying to get another committee to look at that work and then the whole thing um, you know, slows down further. Yes, Mr. Dekle Cole, you have law. May you unmute and speak, please. Mr. Dekle Cole, may you unmute and speak. Yeah, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> good morning. Yeah, um, mine is more of a contribution than uh, than a question. <clears throat> and maybe some of this contribution will answer some of the misconception on the, some of the issues um, the speaker has um, highlighted. The first of which I want to emphasize is the need to removing the investment allowance. I think we should look at it this way. Okay. What was the actual intention while that investment allowance were originally uh, introduced? So um, history avails me that there were periods in the history of Nigeria when there was war in certain part of the country and certain business assets were actually destroyed. Government was not disposed to have been able to restore those affected entities to their rightful state. That was the reason why the investment allowance was actually introduced. But in the light of the present happening, is that very circumstance still prevalent? Maybe yes and no. No in the sense that we don't have it in the real sense but we have it in a reformed state in terms of insecurity, right? So I think um, investment allowance, I will agree with um, the work of the committee that it's long overdue and it's, it's satisfactory to have been removed. But more importantly, we should now look at the reality of what businesses face now. Businesses are actually bedeviled with two major issues. One is insecurity, Two is what I can pair with the uh, exorbitant cost of power and the impact of Forex for those whose operations are dependent on Forex. So what have they done in the light of the present circumstance to actually relieve or incentivize those, um, those companies that are affected by such processes, right? Um, and I think um, this very topic we're looking at is very, very germane. We should not be very pessimistic trying to over-criticize the present happening. Rather, let's try to expose those other avenues where we are expecting government to pay atten attention to. So we'll ad advocate for more incentive for those entities that have spent so much on par what compensation is the government giving? It will surprise you that even when companies have reported this much, and especially the impact of Forex, 
uh, even when those costs are reported, FRS will still be agitating that you should come and substantiate these sums. Otherwise, it will be disallowed. <laughs> so I think issues of this sensitive nature should be specifically addressed in the upcoming legislation for amendment to it, to cushion the effect and the pains of businesses and the entire Nigerians. This is my contribution at the moment. Wow, thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Adegleko. Thank you so much. Your, um, your observations are well noted. Um, let's go over to Mr. Maruf. Ajetumobi, Mr. Maruf. Ajetumobi, um, the floor is yours. You may unmute, sir. Mr. Maruf, Ajetumobi, you may unmute and speak. Okay, Tim, can we? Yeah, Tim, can we? Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. Please. Go ahead. Go ahead. The host is not allowing me to unmute. Hello? Uh, yeah, we can hear you now. You're alive. <laughs> Sorry, you're Thank alive. You. Go ahead, please. Thank you for this opportunity. I really appreciate you. Uh, my name is Maruf Ajitumobi. My contribution is just that uh, no matter the policy, how good the policy is, if there is no data, the policy will not be so effective. What is happening in Nigeria is just that uh, the government except I don't know the input of the, the recommendation of the new uh, tax, amendment, tax uh, reform committee. But if there is no tax ID or personal ID or company ID that is so um, um, effective and they're scrutinized together, then there won't be any effective uh, policy that will generate adequate income for the country. What I'm, what I'm saying is that uh, if all companies and all individuals in Nigeria will have a, a number, maybe NIN or anything, let us synchronize all this together. You, wherever you go, nobody will need to ask you for any source because whatever you do for whoever, the, your number will be there and it will carry you anywhere you go. You cannot operate a business in Abuja or Kano with different names or with different ID and somebody will now be asking you for receipts. Uh, what uh, if you have done a business anywhere with that your unique number? That number will take you anywhere you go in Nigeria. And the moment the appropriate agency put that number in, all the transactions that affect that number will be shown. The moment government can make this one activated and effective, definitely what you are now saying will be a matter of the past because everything will just be generated without anybody agreeing anything. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much, Mr. Maruf Ajitumabe. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. And um, so I will still be looking out if you have any contribution in this regard, because we are trying to deal with um, um, a challenge that the country is facing. And is everybody some call to duty to play your own part? So feel free to still raise your palm if you have confidence to make or if you have questions to ask, we are still here. So, um, Mr. Ganyu, uh, thank you for being here once again. Now, I would like to talk about someone mentioned, that is um, Dr. Uriewote, you talk about the free trade zone, uh, yeah, free trade zone or so. Um, what we have on ground is that um, if what you manufacture or produce in that zone um, are meant for export, that the export proceeds coming from that, so long as it's replored back into Nigeria, um, the profit associated with that export from that zone is exempted from profit. Now, what else do you think government can do? As he asked, you are talking about industrial, re-industrialization of Nigeria once again, or to come back to life as we used to be before now. Is that something that can be done about the free trade zone or on the export and free processing zone and all that? Anything? Yeah, can yeah. we do more? Yeah, we can do more. It's just like, you know, we have, there's what we call tax avoidance and tax uh, evasion. Okay. So people just take advantage of free trade zoom also to be able to <laughs> enjoy some tax benefits okay. where, where they don't belong to, to that. I, I think that is also one of the reasons why FRS in their wisdom says that, oh, before now, they don't file returns, they don't do anything. Then FRS said that we are not telling you to come and pay tax. <laughs> File your return, your audited financial statement, and your, let us see the transaction. If you are actually still operating within the modus of operandi that you should operate with. And so anything outside that, 
it will come after you and collect our taxes, right? So that 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 is on one hand, and on the second hand also, they challenged those ones at the free trade zone as then was inability to be able to repatriate their fund. Okay, okay. Because okay. of the the bottleneck from the CBN and every other thing. So to be able to repatriate their fund, it's affecting the operation because the law says that they must be, they have the free will to repatriate their fund. And so they have the money, they can repatriate it. And also, the law also said that there's a threshold for you to enjoy that kind of benefit. There's a threshold of what you produce in that environment that need to be exported. The reason being that we need to earn more dollars, more foreign currency. So the more exports you make, the better for Nigeria. So the question is that do they meet up with that threshold? Uh, just like coming up to our level of data, okay. our level of statistics. And you know that data is, the, is one of the spirit of everything. If you don't have accurate data, there's no how you can nip me to the mall. Right, so you must have my total data before, like, like someone said that country has gone beyond a level saying that, oh, oh we are coming to audit today. They just said that we already have your data. We know your words, we have your information. They just analyze it together and send it to you. Let me just drive out of the, out of Nigerian jurisdiction. Um, what happened to, we all know Messi, Lionel Messi, right? Uh, so before in Spain, Right in Spain, a, they just discovered that this guy is from Spain. He played football. We saw, him, we see him everywhere. He's making more money. But Spain did not realize until they have financial challenges, and they just get track his record and discover that anytime he play football, the money comes to Spain. But anytime he endorses a product, say for instance, he just pick Pepsi and old Pepsi and say Pepsi is good, the money he hands in dollars hundred of dollars goes to another entity because an, an entity has created in an other jurisdiction Judicial. where its image right goes to it. So they now discover that how is it possible for somebody to be living in Spain and his image is somewhere else? <laughs> wow, interesting. So they now pull all the information together and they raise an assessment and say that, oh, go and pay. And Lion Messi said that, oh, no, we've not done anything wrong. And people now begin to withdraw their endorsement that we don't want people of questionable oh, okay. character. So if you are now Messi, you know that this thing should not, cannot be resolved in, in, in the court of law, but in the public space. So it now says that let us put our resources together and pay, including penalty and interest, because they have the data. So most of this thing, if data, even in an organization, if we don't have a data, so there's no how we can track and say that, oh, Mr. Okoye worth around 100 billion, right? So there's no how we can track you and you worth 100 billion and they discover that what you are paying in tax is just 1 million. So it does not mirror who you are. Do you get it? So all these things will help us to be able to name. So it also brings equality. Look at this, this country, Denmark and Finland, okay. in the Northern Europe. You can, you, you, their, their tax to GDP ratio is around 43%, right? And the, 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 the citizen, what they pay as their taxes is over 60%. Say, for instance, if, so, if somebody is earning a 100,000 naira and is paying 60,000 to the government as taxes, and it goes home with 40,000, and they still have investment, and they're happy doing it. They enjoy it. And because when they did the, uh, the happiness, this thing, they discovered that they, these people are happy. But when you look at it now, the government also spent more on them. In government expenditure, it spent over 53.3% on the citizen. So there is value. Okay, okay on that welfare, you know? The welfare is top notch. Right, so they are eager. The uh, the joy is there. So the, so it's not about now the collection now. So you make them more industrious. Very well, <laughs> because that is it. Yeah. everything is good. So and they collect more in tax because they don't even have the the resources as we have in Nigeria. They depend more on taxes, and they they pay them back. Right. So I think it's also a culture. 
okay. a culture of tax payment. I think there was a time a statistics went on, and out of they discovered that seventeen percent out of Nigerians, seventeen percent are the people that say that oh, it's nice to pay your tax, pay it in full, let government have money to spend and enjoy and, and to to do to provide facility. But eighty three percent say that me pay tax. Give government tax. So the eighty-three percent is that to evade tax is good. So you, if you now look at the statistic, eighty-three to seven, eighty-three to seventeen ratio is not good for our country. It's not good for our country. So those eighty-three people needs to be stepped up and to pay their taxes. And once they pay, it, it also drives industrialization because industrialization is what helps any organization. Any country, look at China. There was a time China closed their door to the world and said that we want to build China. And you could see now by now, China is one of the manufacturing hub for the whole world. Even US cannot joke with China because China discovered that they have the population. They have the resources. So we can change things. So if we, you know, another thing also is that we need to reduce our, 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 our foreign appetite, our imported appetite, we need to be able to consume what we produce in Nigeria. Because if a typical, we are, I once have a client, he produced iron rod. He produced iron rod. And he now discovered that most people, they import the iron rod, and the one they imported is cheaper than his own. You know why? Because he needs to pay for electricity, he needs to pay for this and that. And so because of his cost of production is higher. And because of it, and discovered that there's no more he abandoned his production and start importing wow. and begin to rebrand it, wow. which is not good for us. So we must also reduce our, our appetite for foreign made things, right? Look at India now. I can tell you that for you to get a US visa, it's more easier than getting an Indian visa. In the next five years or 10 years, India will outsmart China. Because they're already working on their system. That's why you can see the best medical facility you go to India. They even refer you to India. So these are things we need to look inward and see how we can, we should not allow the few industry here to jettison out of this country. We must find a way to keep them. Keep them in a way or to ensure that they survive the environment we make the, and also make the environment conducive for them to strive. Because Keeping them is like we're keeping our citizen uh, at, at, at work. And once our citizens are profitably engaged, then even the jackpot syndrome will be reduced. Well, in fact, let me let me come in. You, um, I want to ask something very brutal now. Brutal in the sense that uh, we need to get a solution. About our penchant for foreign products and services. We are here in Nigeria. You see, I would not call their name. Certain university doing online adverts, online adverts, you can do an online MBA. And I said, well, online MBA? Can we run online MBA from within Nigerian institutions? Online MBA. We are not talking about engineering. We are not talking about uh, medicine. We are not talking about pharmacy. We are not talking about architecture. You know, these are administrative courses online, and Nigerians are pumping their scarce forex into getting certification that they do from the comfort of their laptop and smartphones here in Nigeria. This is so why are our universities? Because it doesn't, it does not mean brick and mortar, it doesn't mean stones and rock, right? So, um, you know, why are we not um, trying to ask the government that, hey, these imported product services, can we go on aggressive drive through the import duties to keep raising it as a way of prohibition drive? So make those few ones that are here to try better. Can we not use a drive in the import duty escalation to prohibit categorically some kind of products or kind of service, and also gradually build um, you know a, a, a face of approach towards something that shouldn't even come into Nigeria. So long as we have those companies in Nigeria that can scale up production to meet that, what can we do with um, prohibition to import duty um, regime? And that's a beautiful one. You see, someone once said that we are being liberated from, from colonialism, but it never leaves our mind, <laughs> right? It never leaves our mind. You see, somebody, I, I like what, uh, there was a time Icon does that. They said, oh, 
if you have ACC, you need, still need to sit for a course in ICANN before you get ICANN certificate. Because the same thing, if you go outside the country, you understand? CITN also does that if you have the So the question we should do is that somebody comes to your organization and bring a foreign certificate and you give him more privilege than somebody with a local certificate. So everybody wants to be competitively or competitively relevant. And when you look at the early 80s, I was I wasn't here yesterday, the early 80s. If you live outside the shore of Nigeria to study outside the country, they'll see you as a dollar. They'll see that you are dull. You, you, you don't have the capacity to pass Nigeria. That's why to be able to cover your shame, that's why you run outside the country to study at the early 80s. You now see that people from Canada, from UK, they come to Nigeria to lecture, right? Because our educational system, it's top notch. Okay, so we must have value. And, and someone once said that you, if you don't appreciate what you have, you tactically lose it. So we must put value on what we have, right? And put put make it more relevant. We know that because we need to make it more, oh, oh, we need to make ourselves more competitive at the global space. Look at Af Africa too, African continental. You see, even if it's not established. We must also look inward and see that where do we have a competitive advantage to be able to compete, to be able to compete favorably with other African countries. Because if they, are, they don't build on it, to see what we are going to take there, most of them will just use Nigeria as a dumping ground, and which will not be effective, uh, so, good so, for so, us. So that goes into my question. What do you recommend um, using import duty as a strategy? to prohibit certain categories of rotation to drive our local producers here. What's your thoughts on that? So it's a good one because that's what most uh, most jurisdiction use. Because this you use, you increase import duty on some prohibited goods because the more the higher it is, the more government make, make money. And once they bring it to the country, it cannot compete with a local production. Right, because you are importing something and it's worth a, a hundred thousand, and we produce it with the same quality, with the same standard, and it's worth eighty thousand. I'll go for the local one, all right. And one other thing is that our standard organization, SON, must also strengthen their own level of ensuring that standardization is up to notch. So if we look at all those things, it's absurd. Even US, if you look at their Expo, their import duty they collected is much more than any revenue that any IGR or some countries in this world oh, wow. from import duty yeah, wow. because they earn more. You are bringing it to my country and you need to sell it, then I must put on. And before you know it, some people will now think, oh, rather for us bringing it, why not us bring in our plants and start making production in Nigeria? And which is good. And so once they bring in their plants, do not forget, once they bring in their plant, they won't bring in, they won't import their citizen. They will use Nigeria to, to be able to construct it. And once they are building it in Nigeria, it makes the goods cheaper. And it also creates employment opportunity for Nigeria. Government also will also earn their own revenue from it. Wow, thank you so much. I wish you have more time. I can see the whole thing is slowing. I will keep talking on and on and on and on. I want to thank um, you once again. Coming, Mr. Gani Olua Sholai CTI, um, the managing and partner of KGB Professional Service. Thank you for the past one hour we've been discussing. Thank you for and having me. And we wish we had no, uh, more time. I want to thank our viewers out there who have been with us, who have um, asked questions, make contributions on this Turkey issue or now Nigeria can move forward. We say a big thank you to the president of the Institute and the entire council member for being with us on this journey. We thank our production team behind there. You can't see them, who can you can't see them, but who can see them. Thank you all. And we look forward to, um, to you joining us in our next episode in year 2024. Thank you all and bye for now.